Okay, time for some things I like and then some things that, that I hate. So things that I like. Let us begin with one of the great episodes of South Park ever. So South Park you know, is, is a show that I have enjoyed, I would say, on an infrequent basis from time to time. It's not like a regular watch for me. But there are certain episodes that are just classics. And they did, in fact, release a classic this week. It centered on Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and their consistent attempts to be private by constantly seeking attention. It's hysterically funny. So let me start with you, Sam. You've lived a life with the royal family. You've had everything handed to you. But you say your life has been hard. And now you've written all about it in your new book, Where? Yes, that's right, friend. You see, my wife and I, I are totally like you should write a book because your family like stupid and then so are like journalists. So you hate journalists. That's right. And now you wrote a book that reports on the lives of the royal family. Right. So you're a journalist. We just want to be normal people. All this attention is so hard. Isn't it true, sir, that your questionable wife has her own TV show and hangs out with celebrities and does fashion magazines? What are you suggesting? Well, I just think some people might say that your Instagram-loving wife actually doesn't want her privacy. How dare you, sir? My Instagram-loving wife has always wanted her privacy. And you know what else? To hell with Canada. We are leaving. We'll go find some quiet place where we can be normal people. Come on, wife. We want privacy. We, we want privacy. privacy. We want privacy. And, uh, and they then proceed to take a jet around the United States and around the world, actually, looking for privacy on what they call their worldwide privacy tour, complete with song. Uh, it is... <laughs> And these folks are actually, I would say they're beyond parody, but clearly they're not. South Park did an amazing job on that. There are actual rumors, by the way, that Harry and Meghan wanted to sue the creators of South Park. There are actual rumors that came out to that effect, which would be just a perfect example of the so-called Streisand effect. The Streisand effect is named after Barbara Streisand, the famed singer, because there was a, a point a couple of decades back when there was an aerial photograph taken of the California coast. And nobody had ever seen this photograph. It was, it was in a public place, but nobody ever had seen it. And this aerial photograph contained a picture of Barbara Streisand's home. It wasn't labeled or anything. And so Barbara Streisand freaked out and she threatened to sue the photographer unless he took down the photo. And he was like, I'm not taking down the photo. It's a picture of the coastline. Why, why would I take down the photo? But because she sued him, it ended up becoming a very popular photo and millions of people saw it. This is the same sort of thing. I mean, the, the fact that this was even discussed, like suing South Park over this is, is amazing. A representative said, it's all frankly nonsense, totally baseless, boring reports. But apparently, apparently, the response followed days of articles noting that the Duchess of Sussex was distinctly unhappy about Matt Stone and Trey Parker's depiction of the couple. The spectator had claimed she was upset and overwhelmed by the show and annoyed by South Park, but refuses to watch it all, despite it being unclear who its source was. That, by the way, is hysterically funny. She's upset and overwhelmed by the show. Now, the, so one of the things in the show that is so devastating is that it, it points out that Harry and Meghan are claiming victimhood and are some of the least victimized people on the planet. The whole, sh the whole episode is about how one of the characters in South Park goes to an image consultant to remake his image as a school child. And Harry and Megan have already gone to the image consultant. And the end of every image consultant's pitch for what your new brand should be is victim. So for the princess, it's stuff like first lady annoyer, victim. For the prince, it's like prince, victim. And so when they claim victimhood, when she's like, oh my God, I'm so upset and overwhelmed by South Park. All you had to do was go and live your life and nobody would care. Instead, you decided that you were going to go and sign a deal with Spotify and a deal with Netflix and that you were going to be a famous person. And that you're, again, the, the, the very notion that Meghan Markle married into the royal family because she was seeking a private life with the man she loved is absurd. As I pointed out, I mean, I did like a full review of Harry's silly book. And, um, you know, like in the book, he talks about his dating history with Meghan. On like their fourth date, he invited her to spend a week in Africa with him. And she's like, sure. And he's like, I, she didn't know who I was. She didn't Google me. Uh-huh. She literally covered Kate Middleton's wedding on her Instagram page. So yeah, I'm pretty sure she knew who you were. And I'm pretty sure that you might be married now because she knew who you were. As it turns out, people like Prince Harry, meaning a habitual approaching middle-aged drug user and alcoholic who can't hold down a steady job don't tend to land B-list actresses. Just as a general rule, unless they are princes. If they are princes, it seems to help the deal a little bit. It's, it's honestly amazing stuff from South Park as per the usual, but <laughs> really, really funny. I gotta love me some South Park. It's hilarious stuff. I'll tell you what's not hilarious, how your portfolio looks right now. So the reality is the stock market is bouncing around. Nobody knows what's coming next. 
And the government is not helping this out at all. Are they going to inflate the currency, deflate the currency? What are they going to do with spending? No one knows the answers to these questions. This is just one reason you should diversify your asset base. It's one reason why I own some gold from Birch Gold. To dig our country out of the current mountain of debt that we are in, every single taxpayer in America would have to write a check for $247,000. The bill will come due at some point. And at that point, you're going to hope that you'd taken some of your money and put it in an actual precious metal that withstands inflation, geopolitical turmoil, and stock market crashes. Consider converting your IRA or 401k into an IRA in precious metals. You can own gold in a tax-sheltered retirement account. Talk to the experts at Birch Gold. They've got an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, thousands of happy customers, and countless five-star reviews. Again, I've diversified. You should do the same. Text Ben to 989898. Claim your free info kit on gold. Then talk to one of their precious metals specialists. That's Ben to 989898 today. Text Ben to 989898. Claim that free info kit on gold and talk to one of their precious metal specialists. Have all your questions answered and then invest with Birch Gold. South Park is eternally funny, but you know it is not going to be eternally young, your skin, unless you take care of it. It's a very important thing. So I'm on camera every day. That means that I have to actually worry about my skin quality, but you should worry about your skin quality too. It's the thing that's going to make you look old as you get older. This is one reason why my wife, why my mom, why many of the people in my life use GenuCell. GenuCell is born from its founder in a small New Jersey town as a favor to one of his pharmacy customers. Using rare botanical extracts and scientifically researched ingredients, GenuCell is uniquely formulated to target all those visible signs of aging, fine lines, wrinkles, dark spots, sagging jawline, even those puffy under eye bags. The GenuCell product you use today uses that same one-of-a-kind proprietary flower base developed by its founder all those years ago. All GenuCell products work for both men and women, plus they are safe for all skin types. You are guaranteed to see immediate results in 12 hours or your money back. Try GenuCell's most popular package for 70% off at GenuCell.com slash Shapiro. Join millions of happy customers who have already fallen in love with the results. Plus, for a limited time, get GenuCell's probiotic extract-infused moisturizer free with every most popular package. Subscribe, get a complimentary bonus box. Go to GenuCell.com slash Shapiro. That's GenuCell.com slash Shapiro. Another thing I like. So I want to tell you about a great episode in child rearing. So you hear all of my horror stories about what it's like to have kids. And you hear some of my cute stories about what it's like to have kids as well. So last, this is a really great story because it teaches you the value of the free market. So last week, my kids and I, you know, it's late in the afternoon. One of the things that we like to do in our neighborhood, there are some golf courses. And one of the things that sometimes we'll do is we'll go take a golf cart and we'll like go to the outskirts of the golf courses and we'll pick up stray golf balls that have been missing. It's, it's like almost an Easter egg hunt for my kids. It's really, really fun. They like to they get off the, the cart and they like dig the golf balls out of the dirt and all of this sort of stuff. And over the course of maybe the past month, it turns out that they dug up like 75 or 80 of these golf balls. And so they decided to start a business, my nine-year-old and my six-year-old, my nine-year-old daughter, my six-year-old son. And so they started a business. They put up a, a sign and they decided to sell the golf balls, the used golf balls for a dollar. My son didn't really understand the pricing mechanism at the beginning. So at, at the beginning, there was one red golf ball that he really liked. like, I will sell this for $100. And I said to him, I mean, if you want to keep the golf ball, that's a good strategy, but do you want to keep it or do you want to sell it? And he said, well, you know, I said, would you rather have a dollar or would you rather have the golf ball? He said, I'd rather have a dollar. Fine. So he lowered the pricing mechanism. This is how markets work, folks. And, uh, and then we put out a notice to our kind of local community group on WhatsApp. And we said that my kids are selling golf balls, used golf balls for a buck a piece. And this is one of the beautiful things about being part of a really nice community. Everybody decided they're gonna buy used golf balls for my kids. So in the first 10, 15 minutes of this, of this notice going out, all of our friends said, okay, I'll take 10 golf balls. I'll take 15 golf balls and, and all the rest. So my kids got super into it. They made like a, a flyer. They made a sign. They took pictures. We went, we, they made little bags. They dropped off the golf balls. The door-to-door -door service, that was part of the thing, was delivery. And so the kids would run up to the door. They'd pick up the money. It was all very, very sweet. And my daughter, who's nine, she, we were talking about this. And she said, this is great. We should do more of this. And I said, well, right, it's very labor intensive. It takes a lot of work to go find all of these golf balls. One of the things you could do is there are a lot of kids in the neighborhood who also live near golf courses. You could tell them that you will give them 25 cents a pop for the golf balls and they can sell them at buck a pop. And she said, the right question, she said, well, why do I get an extra 75 cents? Why should I sell it for a dollar when the labor input is 25 cents? So, well, you're putting in a bunch of other labor, right? You're aggregating the golf balls. No one wants to buy a single used golf ball. People want to buy 10 or 20 of them. So you're aggregating them. You're marketing them. You're dropping them off. You're doing the delivery. You're packaging them. You're doing all of these things and all these things take time. And my daughter turns to me and she says, so time is money. And I was like, yes, yes, it is. Here's kind of the beautiful thing about getting your kids involved in entrepreneurial activity at a very young age. One of the beautiful things is it teaches a lot of skills. So my daughter was learning and my son, they were learning math during this process. They were learning the value of actually working because they get paid for the work. They were learning that if they put in more input, if there's a market, they'll get more output. 
They're learning customer service. They have to be nice to the people who they are dropping the golf balls off to. Like all of these things are socializing and they are good. Free market is a good thing. And I'm very proud of my kids. It's very sweet of them. I'm also particularly proud of them because I asked them what they were doing with the money afterward. And they said, well, we're going to give like a big chunk of it. They, they earned like 70 bucks. I said, you know, what do you want to do with it? And they said, well, we have to give a lot of it to tzedakah, which in Hebrew is charity. We have to give some of it to charity. And then we want to take some of it. And they had a bit of a disagreement on what to do with it. Uh, they, they, one of them, my son reinvested it in capital equipment. He immediately went and, and took $20 and bought a golf ball washing machine so that when we get the balls from the course, then, uh, then he can wash them off in the golf ball washing machine. So he was spending this morning doing that. Again, investing back in the business. Smart business move. Uh, my daughter actively considered buying stock. I'm not kidding. Because I'd explained to her how the stock market works. And so she's like, can I buy a share of a company? I was like, you can. You can, in fact, buy a share of a company. Ah, the joys of business. Okay, time for a quick thing that I hate. So uh, how stupidly woke have things become? Things have become so stupidly woke that even people who are anti-slavery are now being canceled because they're not anti-slavery enough in their depictions of the evils of slavery. There's an article in the New York Times that is titled, In Vermont, a school and artist fight over murals of slavery. Created to depict the brutality of enslavement, the works are seen by some as offensive. The school wants them permanently covered. The artist says they're historically important. So what happened? Well, apparently, for years, when students at Vermont Law and Graduate School came to Shirley Jefferson with objections to the murals in the student center and their depictions of black people, it struck, struck some as race, racist caricatures. The longtime black administrator urged those protesting to move on. Ms. Jefferson, who is 69, is no stranger to racism or protest. She was born in segregated Selma, Alabama in 1953 and helped integrate her high school. She said, I told them, you did not come here to fight over a mural. You came to get educated. Then came the summer of 2020, and Jefferson and others found a renewed commitment to confront embedded racism. She said, when George Floyd was killed, all of a sudden I said to myself, that mural has got to go. But the artist who painted the mural, a person named Sam Carson, who is white, fought back against the plan. Why did he fight back against the plan? Well, because he says, number one, it is a major work. It is my life. It's important that it be there. And it's historically important in about what it says about black people rising up to resist. And it's important as a record of what we said in 1993. The two murals are each 24 feet long, and they depict the brutality of slavery, with scenes including a slave market, a slave owner wielding a whip, and an attacking dog. They also show white Vermonters protesting slavery and helping people escape to freedom via the Underground Railroad. The style is more expressive than realistic, and it was inspired by Mexican muralists like Jose Clemente Orozco. So now the law school has covered the paintings with white panels so as not to offend anyone, even though, again, the entire point of the murals is that slavery is extremely bad and white people participated in it. But it's not enough. They must come down because modern sensibilities are offended. And this is similar to, to a, a bit of a spat that we had yesterday on Twitter in which Ibram X. Kendi tweeted out pictures of the first president. It was during President's Day. He's like, many of these people were slaveholders. Eight out of the first 12 presidents were slaveholders and, uh, and held thousands of slaves combined. And this is something you should remember. America was founded in slavery, not in freedom. And so I responded by saying, many of those people also wrote the Constitution that provided for its future amendment, attempted to abolish the slave trade by 1808, and also created the freedom that you are getting rich off of today. And this, of course, made some people very angry, made some people very, very angry because you're, you're supposed to only focus on the evils of the past. This is the beautiful thing about the modern woke generation. The modern woke generation is the only good, they're the only good people to ever have been born. They are perfect in every single way. And so everyone who came before them must be cast out into the outer darkness because all those people were flawed. But they are not flawed. They have all the right views today. Now, tomorrow they won't have the right views and they'll be forced to kneel and bend before the prevailing status quo. But for the moment, they are riding the high horse of moral privilege. And that high horse of moral privilege says that these people who have provided no actual service to society, who've never done anything of actual value, who've actually been a negative drain on society's resources in many ways because all they do is chip away at the society that creates wealth and freedom. These people are spending their days stewing in hatred for people who died 200 years ago and also were kind of important and did things. It is amazing how people who uselessly sit there and tweet things on Twitter think that they are more important world historical figures than people who actually did things like found the United States of America. Alrighty, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We will be getting into the mailbag. So make sure that you are a member because only your questions will be answered. Become a member. Use code Shapiro at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Click the link in the description and join us.